welcome you to Championship Monday at the 2021 USA Ultimate College National Championships from Norco, California. The first ever December College Nationals culminates with a doubleheader starting with the men's final featuring Georgia and North Carolina. The 11 seed Georgia, the surprise in the final two, getting past Texas in the quarters and then Michigan in the semis, beating some big schools along the way. North Carolina surpassing the two seed Colorado in the quarters and UNC defeating the defending champs, dethroning Brown. Here they are, here we are. It's great to be with you alongside Ian Toner. I am Evan Leffler, really excited for this matchup and this doubleheader and Ian, the headline has to be the University of North Carolina. We'll see Pleiades in the women's division go for their first title later on. Dark side going for title number three. What this North Carolina program has done, they've got a chance to be the first program in over three decades to win both college titles. This North Carolina ultimate community has been building towards these potential accomplishments for the better part of the last decade. Mike Denardis, Jesse Jones, Tristan Green, Jonathan Nethercutt, coaching all of these younger players, building them up in their own systems, and now they have a chance to bear fruit and capture championships. A lot of great ultimate minds have built the foundation, but you could really say the same thing about Georgia this Georgia team is a product of the youth scene in Atlanta in the surrounding areas and they play with a feistiness a ferocity they've been the biggest surprise of the tournament well one of the main reasons they're here is because of their D line and their D line offense and the man who anchors that unit is Adam Miller look at what he does for this group on a turnover just calls his shot and rips full field hucks stretching the field, making this D-line offense so difficult to contain. He's someone who's embraced this role, this transition to the D-line, and frankly, Evan, he is the heart and soul of this Georgia squad. Georgia's 16-0 in the season, yet they're still the underdog because the top seed North Carolina dark side squad is back. It's their seventh straight trip to the semifinals. This is their fifth championship game. They're looking for their third title, and this might be the deepest, most talented team they've ever had. And look, we could talk about any number of contributors with club championship or international championship experience, but Elijah Long is playing at another level at this tournament this weekend. We'd seen him contribute to championships in the past, primarily on the defensive unit, and now he's a central offensive handler linchpin, unleashing blades and hammers, opening up looks that throwers at this level don't even think are available. I'm excited to see what he's got in his arsenal today. He throws with his right hand, he throws with his left hand, he throws with his eyes open. Sometimes he even throws with his eyes closed, believe it or not. North Carolina's the favorite, but Georgia, certainly a worthy contender. And the opening pull of the 2021 Men's Championship game is coming up. The 2021 USA Ultimate College Championships are presented by Discraft, home of the Ultra Star, the official disc of USA Ultimate, your place for all your ultimate and disc golf needs. Visit Discraft.com. We make flying discs fun. UGA and UNC, let's take a look at Georgia's starting seven. That looks like a D-line with Miller, DeFrancesco, and Bennett, Hill, Hobbs, Chandler, and Krugler for the coaches Liz Leon in her first season and Sam Batson, who played for Georgia, graduating in 2018. North Carolina dark side, uber talented. We talked about Elijah Long in the open. Keep an eye on number two, Liam Searles Bowes. He came into college with so much hype as a high school player, and he has lived up to the hype, or at least that's what all his teammates think. This might be his time to really shine on the big stage. At the moment, it is beautiful here in Norco, California at the foothills of the Santa Ana Mountains, about an hour east of Los Angeles. December 20th, College Nationals. It's been over two and a half years since this title was up for grabs. It'll be either Dark Side or Georgia taking the crown here today. And Georgia begins on offense. And Aiden Downey is the center handler for this Georgia team. He's best friends from his childhood with one of North Carolina's top defenders, number 10, Matt Dameron. In fact, Aiden Downey usually wears number six, but he's wearing number 10 today. 
Talked to Ben on the sidelines before this pull went up, and I asked him if he and Aiden had any bets going into this game. They were expecting to meet in quarterfinals, but Georgia outperformed in pool play, and they just had to say, hey, all right, we'll save it for the championship game. They'll suspend that friendship for about an hour 45 to decide a champion. Squeezing it up the line. Georgia trying to strike first, and they do. Jake Powell to Ryan Flick, and a smooth O point. That's very important when you think about what North Carolina did to Brown's offense in the first few points yesterday for Georgia to get off smooth sailing today. Yeah, in the semifinal last night, the Carolina defense just came out swinging, registering multiple breaks, jumping out to an early 3-0 lead. But here, this Georgia offense in its first championship game looking completely unfazed, perfectly poised and patient, ready to exploit the poaches. You see the defenders peeling off the front of the stack to try and protect that front cone. And right away, rather than getting distracted by that, they immediately look to find the open, unguarded receiver, Ryan Flick, in the front of the end zone. And now Georgia gets its D-line on the field, and that's where they feel most comfortable. That's how they have gotten to the championship, with their D-line. A thriller over Colorado in pool play, 14-13. They were down in that second half, came back to win it. Victories over Cal Poly, Northeastern, and Utah State, and then the road through bracket play. Tight game with Texas. That was another thriller. Sure was. Had to break to win that one. And then really outmatched Michigan in the semifinal. Michigan's first ever trip to the semis. Great tournament they had, but one game short of this stage. Here's Liam Searles Bowes to Anders Jungst. We'll see Anders' sister Ella playing for UNC's women's team Pleiades in the second final of the day. And for Frisbee fans, the Youngst siblings aren't going away anytime soon. Anders, one of the handful of club champions with Ring of Fire in the fall, and there's Elijah Long. He threw six goals yesterday, in. he catches the first one today, and a clinical O point for Darkside. Just some excellent spacing from Carolina as it works the disc down the field. Nice spread set, working out receivers in isolation, giving them a ton of space, putting those defenders for Georgia on islands. And you can see very early on, intentionally, Georgia hasn't thrown anything crazy just yet, but I love the ideas of these matchups. Adam Miller on Anders Jungst. Drew DeFrancesco trying to slow down the speedster. AD24, Alex Davis. Very few teams have been able to slow down this North Carolina O-line. Georgia has some ideas. We'll see if they can create some resistance. University of North Carolina back in the final for the fifth time in seven years. Wins over Colorado in Brown in bracket play after a pretty smooth trip through pool play. Their roughest half in pool play, as far as they're concerned, may have been the first half of their tournament against UC San Diego, the five seed in their pool, just getting their feet under them. But uh, North Carolina has looked mighty strong. They have set a new standard for college ultimate. Seven straight semifinals. It's never happened before in the men's division. Only the Stanford women in the women's division did it. Superfly back in the early 2000s, seven consecutive Final Fours. Here's a different defensive look for UNC. Junky zony defense here from dark side. Number one, that takes away any quick pull play string, an easier goal. And number two, just forces this increased volume of passes. And that one sails. An ambitious shot. He had Aiden, Hayden Austin nab open. 
But clearly just too much sauce on that flick. Tapero saw the lane. Searles Bowes was a little underneath the receiver. Liam Searles Bowes unleashes the big backhand and gives it right back to Georgia. Siraj Mataraju, the intended target. That's two hucks that didn't really have a chance, Ian. And this dark side defense is trying to find its footing after that turnover once again. Floater snagged by Matt Cook. He's a dynamic deep threat for the Georgia offense. And to the open man, Jack Stevenson in the end zone. Couple of turnovers on that last point, but three offensive holds in the men's final. 2-1 Georgia. Ryan Flick with an early goal and an early assist as Georgia leads 2-1 in the men's final. As we take a look at Georgia's response, after getting that disc back, Liam Searles, Bose Huck sails out of bounds and I think it was a combination of Georgia keeping its poise and moving appropriately, and also that dark side defense just couldn't reestablish the junky, confusing set that it had thrown earlier in the point. It's a junky look for the Georgia defense, and Carolina gets it to midfield pretty quick, then retreats, and a bid from Adam Miller, unsuccessful against Elijah Long. Here's the guy they refer to as the fastest man in ultimate, number 24, Alex Davis. Yesterday in the semis underneath his jersey, he had a shirt on that said faster than fast. Probably still playing with a lightning bolt earring. Here he is coming under. And his throw was low, but scooped up by Jungst. George is calling it down. Cole Chandler might have gotten a hand on that one. An awkward flick release across his body. I beg your pardon, Chandler didn't get a hand on that one. Oh man. Observers have ruled it up. And I think that's the right call. He had his hands on the disc before it hit the ground. Alex Davis, not in the end zone yet. That's a difficult one-two to stop. Alex Davis and Anders Jungst. And Darkside ties it 2 all. It's funny, you don't always see emotion from Anders Jungst. He's had people tell him, hey man, you don't look like you're having fun <laughs> when you're out there. But when you want to set the tone early on in the national championship game, edge down spikes are the way to go. And Young's so tough to contain in these end zone spaces, and Davis broke the mark to get that done, too. Wow, I just can't wait to see these matchups continue to unfold. Miller on Youngst earlier. Miller on Long that point. Miller laying out and coming close to blocks. Well, this matchup was a regional rivalry for a very long time. The old Atlantic Coast stretched from the tops of Virginia all the way down to Florida. So if you think about the teams at Nationals right now, I mean, from both divisions, the old Atlantic Coast included Virginia, all three North Carolina schools, Wilmington State and UNC, Florida State, Georgia. Obviously, Florida won championships. William & Mary was a great team out of the Atlantic Coast as well. They redrew the regions a handful of years ago as Georgia shoots at long, open man deep, two open men there, and Carolina gets burned, and Ryan Flick scores again. Georgia digs the long ball. There's no question about it, and this is as close to... I understand that Carolina ran some poaches here, but this was almost a perfectly executed pull play. That was a three-throw goal right there. That looked like a Georgia practice point. The defense did not do what we're used to seeing the Carolina defense do. You know what? This team has prided itself on what it calls goober energy. Just being weird, embracing each other, coming up with silly inside jokes, building camaraderie in a special way, and we'll say that little hula hoop motion is Cooper energy epitomized. While Georgia in the finals for the first time, I mean, this program's had a lot of great players, a lot of great teams. They made the semis in 2006 in Columbus, Ohio. But this is the first trip to the final. You compare that to North Carolina, who's in the final for the fifth time in the last seven years with a couple titles to show for it. And the memory of what happened in the final the last time it happened, Memorial Day weekend 2019, when they got blown out by Brown. The difference in experience on this stage has not necessarily been a factor thus far. AD taking off deep, Youngst holstering. There was some extra deep defender help, and Youngst threw over the poach. Ryan Hill swats it down for UGA. 
Adam Miller takes the quick timeout, and Georgia has its first break chance. We need an Adam Miller timeout counter. He's been doing this all weekend long. Why does he love calling timeouts so much? Because it means they got a block? It means they got a block. It means he gets to pick up the disc and throw it into the end zone if he wants and convert a break. Look at Ryan Hill. He's the other candidate probably leading the team in timeout calls. I love how much this team is celebrating that. Now Liz Leon just moved to Athens in June, started helping out. She played college ultimate at Bowdoin. Grew up in Atlanta, was a basketball player at Paideia. Ryan Hill gets the block. There's Sam Batson with a jean jacket. As I mentioned, he played for Georgia, graduating in 2018. These coaches are not the most hands-on coaches you'll ever see, but they seem to really have their finger on the pulse of what their team needs. And it's funny because when Georgia approached them at the start of the season, the request from the captains was, hey, can you guys just help us out with player development on kind of an individual level? And then a couple weeks into the season, they realized the value they could bring. They realized how much responsibility there was and said, hey, we need you to do more than that. And here they are in the finals for the first time ever, just a few months later. And unlike this North Carolina team that has several players competing in their last college ultimate game today, just kept alive there by Jared Bennett, Georgia expects to have virtually everyone back in the spring. Terrifying thought for the rest of the men's division. Can the boys from Athens strike first in the break department? Floating that one up high, snared by the leaping Cole Chandler. Miller swings it nicely. To the end zone for the Georgia score. It's Drew DeFrancesco. And at least early, it's not looking like a North Carolina runaway for two Georgia. UGA entered this championship game as sizable underdogs to the perennial power North Carolina, but Georgia off to a hot start. Georgia making the most of this timeout call. There was a scary moment. They had to save possession. But you see this finishing throw. It's great to see Jared Bennett contributing in this game. If you were with us for yesterday's semifinal against Michigan, you saw him roll his ankle after a bidding Michigan defender came in under his feet in the end zone. But Bennett's back out there contributing. He said last night he wasn't sure how he'd feel this morning, but he felt good. Good to go. Elijah Long lets it rip. John McDonald in the end zone makes the one-handed grab. I'm not going to lie, Evan, when this one first went up, I thought there was a chance that this was a bad de decision because McDonald was already 35, 40 yards deep at the point of release. And you can see he has to slow up a little bit to let that one come into his bread basket. But just pure power here from Elijah Long. You feel for the defender, Ryan Hill, that arcing flight path is coming in directly over his head. He can't track it as it goes along the side of his shoulder. More often than not, coaches will tell you, hey, sometimes you just got to put your head down and sprint right up next to the receiver. If you're lucky, check back in with the disc at the last second. It's so hard to program those body mechanics when you got the pressure of someone chasing you down and having to chase someone down in the national championship game. Well, Elijah Long was a high school senior when Jonathan Nethercutt and the freshman Matt Gushohannis, among others, won the championship in 2015. In 16, in Raleigh, Minnesota took the title. Carlton beat Wilmington, who had the shocking run over Carolina in the semis behind Jack Williams. And J.D. Hastings, who's a former dark sider now on the UNC coaching staff. North Carolina back at the top of the pyramid in 2018 with a 14-10 win over Pitt. And then it was Carolina trying to go back-to-back -back for the first time. But Brown had other ideas with Mac Hecht, John Randolph, and company. Only three turnovers in the game thus far through seven points. Only break belongs to Georgia. It's the Men's College Championship at USA Ultimate College Nationals, an event that was canceled in 2020 because of the pandemic. Could not be held in the spring of 2021 either. So this is the first Nationals, a special December edition. Last one was 2019 Memorial Day weekend, Round Rock, Texas, when the world was a very different place. And a much windier setting there too, it's relative right. to the calm that we have here. Georgia gives UNC a chance. It's a great point though, Ian. All weekend long here in Norco, California, it has been pristine. Had a little wind in the first women's semifinal yesterday, but other than that, the wind has not been a factor. And we love that for ultimate. All of the throwing arsenal is a go for these talented, powerful, creative throwers here at the championships. Ben Dameron, the Atlanta native we mentioned, centers it for Searles Bowes. Quick give for Elijah Long, looking for the end zone. And it was baited beautifully. Matt Cook gets it back for UGA. You see him there, just a step behind, hiding a tiny bit in the stack, and Elijah Long tapped his chest immediately. And an insane layout block for UNC's Eli Freed. 
Another chance for Long and Dark Side. Here's Mataraju. Tried to jam it in there and it works. Talented sophomore Rutledge Smith in his first college nationals. Gets the break and we're even at four. My goodness, that block from Eli Freed to get the disc back for Dark Side. Pressure on the underneath. Beats Hayden Austin Nab, who is at times untouchable. Lays out past him. And to make the bid without creating a bunch of contact with Austin Nab too. Expert level body control. And then Mataraju had the stall count rising on him and as a tight space, we've talked about all weekend long the danger of poaching defenders in those front corner spaces, but Mataraju, quick gut shot to Rutledge Smith, works out. Well, let's remember that block by Eli Freed. It's funny, there was a really awkward moment in the semifinals yesterday when something we've never seen before transpired. A point was stopped in the middle of that North Carolina Brown game when UNC actually had eight players on the field. We have gotten the story of what happened. J.D. Hastings was calling the D-line. Elijah Long was not supposed to be on the field. He heard the name Eli. They never call Elijah Long Eli. Eli Freed was supposed to be on the field. Elijah Long was not. He said he was so locked in, he just stayed out there. And that's why UNC had eight men on the field. And the defensive play call was a band-to-band -band matchup play call. And Elijah Long just didn't have an assignment. It's a fun job. It was bizarre and bewildering, but hey, we moved on. Four all, one break apiece. An important O point here for Georgia. Matarashu coming underneath for the pressure, but a quick dish. Oh, goodness! Rutledge Smith with a handler defense. To Dameron for the score, but a foul called. And this one might be coming back. They'll discuss it. Ultimate still a self-officiated sport. The observers help to settle disputes. They're the observers for the men's final. So it'll be a contested foul, and it's coming back to Rutledge Smith. Smith, one of those guys that the North Carolina coaches were excited to watch break out on the national stage this weekend. Another product of that triangle area youth scene. Anders Jukes not near the cone, but finds space in the middle of the end zone too. And catches the goal from Andrew Lee. Well, here's the turnover. The swing and the reset was a good choice. Cook just underthrew it. Didn't lead his dump receiver to the appropriate space. And then, I mean, Carolina red zone offense. Youngs to the front of the stack. That's like a sure thing, eight days a week. Great connection there with his former roommate, Andrew Lee, as well. The two of them pushed each other so long and so hard throughout the pandemic. Training partners, essentially sparring partners on the field. Lee was often the one who had the unenviable task of guarding Youngst in practice. Ryan Humphrey shared some of those responsibilities too, doing the best they can to slow down that prolific goal scorer. And I know this means a ton to Andrew Lee. The last time UNC was at Nationals, last time anyone was at Nationals, Lee was just a freshman, didn't really get a chance to play many meaningful points in the big games. His role has certainly increased since then. Heck of an atmosphere here at the Silver Lake Sports Complex, Norco, California, known as Horsetown, USA. So Georgia has been broken back-to-back -back points. Carolina scored three in a row since trailing four to two. It's a game to 15, half times at eight. Deep shot, Georgia. This is their game and they're showing it off in the finals. What a missile run down by Jared Bennett. Five all. I love the confidence here from the Georgia offense. Hayden Austin Nab, completely unfazed by being blown up on an underneath cut. Points ago. Steps into this backhand, gives it all he's got. Hits Bennett in stride with space to measure. This is when this Georgia offense is at its best. Stretching the field vertically. North-South, using its hucking power. North Carolina's up a break, but Georgia hanging tough with a powerhouse from Chapel Hill. Adam Miller in the UGA D-line back out there on the field. And Liam Searles-Bose is gonna let Elijah Long pick up the disc. It's a horizontal stack downfield. 
with McKnight, Youngst, Davis, and Singleton. A couple other offensive studs crossing over here for Georgia to play defense. Hayden Austin Nab and Aiden Downey among them. Charles Bowes thought about it, but he'll reset to Youngst. Two goals and one assist already for Anders. Goodness, Drew DeFrancesco so close to a block on Davis, but now he's out of position. And Davis takes advantage on the doorstep of the end zone. UNC trying to get a dominator handler set. The cutters aren't doing much downfield in the end zone until Alex Davis dishes up the field and just narrowly getting the toe touchdown was John Singleton. This talented freshman, one of the few impact freshman contributors at Nationals here in December in Cali, 6-5 UNC. Back here in California where we've got about an hour of daylight left. North Carolina with a 6-5 lead as Davis hits Singleton for the UNC score right before the break. Singleton's a pretty cool story. Dark side Callahan winner and coach Matt Gushohannis has been coaching him since his freshman year of high school. And I think that's just emblematic of the commitment that players like Gusho Hannes and other alums have to giving back to the Triangle Ultimate community and growing the sport and coaching future leaders. It's, it's a really special commitment that Dark Side takes a lot of pride in. Some of the youth players in North Carolina have built youth teams, go to college tournaments, and farewell. There was a team this fall of North Carolina youth that actually played this Georgia team in the tournament. They scored six points on them. They didn't win, but they were you know, respectable, competitive. Here's Austin Nab. Launched the deep shot, a possession to go. Takes the reset for Aiden Downey. Scoober out of the reach. Elijah Long got a hand on it. Long gets credit for the block as Coleman Caparo unable to save the day. And Long's gonna call a timeout. I wasn't opposed to that look. I love Scoobers. I love attacking the break side. Just a little too casual. That release was just tight to the body. I know we're playing Monday morning quarterback up here in the booth, but. You can, you can really step out and have a lot higher, more difficult release point for those scoopers. That was just kind of a casual release. Thought he could catch Long sleeping on the mark. UNC just steamrolling through the Carolina Conference, Atlantic Coast Regionals, and here at Nationals, not many close tests. Haven't been too many games like this. Chance to go up 7-5 and take their first multi-goal lead of the game. Elijah Long has Suraj Mataraju closest to him. Those are two of the seven guys who were playing their last game for Dark Side today. I mean, there was some conversation, would this be Liam Searles Bowe's last game? No, they expect him back in the spring. This Carolina team's not going anywhere. Long shooting it to a deep, deep. And Georgia was ready for that hook. Matt Cook easily patrolling the deep space for the block. Pretty intentional defensive set there for Georgia. Coming out of that timeout, they've always got that cap that help over the top. It's especially easy to set when you have a traditional vertical stack that Darkside came out of the timeout with. And usually after Georgia gets a turn, they call a timeout, but Adam Miller's on the sideline. This Huck hanging in the end zone, and Kevin Pignoni gets the block. Swatting it out the back for UNC. Again, two throwers unaware of the cap and deep help over the top. I know that these throwers have to execute in rhythm, but you also just gotta make sure you got smart athletic defenders that you're competing against. Just take an extra half second to check before you pull the trigger. And if you do have someone in that deep, deep space, it usually means someone's going to be open underneath. He's got to recognize. From his own end zone, Searles Bowles hooked it. Out of bounds. Has to be one of the sloppiest points that Darkseid has played all tournament. Definitely surprised by Hucks into coverage. Hucks out of bounds. A lot of room for D-line offense efficiency improvement. Caparo back for Austin Nab. Near the sideline, Stevenson. Pretty good handler defense. Elijah Long poached away, which left his man Taparo open. Taparo to Austin Nab for the Georgia score. If you're a gambler on defense, sometimes you'll get burned. And that's what happened to Elijah Long and Darkside right there. Here's a look at the most recent Darkside turnover on this point. Elijah Long had steps. As you said, Evan Searles Bowes just hooked it. And then Elijah Long poached to try and take away the dump option. There were two defenders there guarding in the dump space. That left Taparo completely unmarked. And once Taparo gets the disc, it's just an easy continuation over the defense. You see the hammer there to Taparo, and then the blade to that back corner, almost like a back shoulder fade to Hayden Austin now. So it's six all. 
Top rope, actually tore his meniscus and MCL at the US Open. They were worried if he would be back for this fall series, but he's around 90, 95%. Taparo, one of the couple players in this game, whose AP biology teacher at Paideia High School was the great Miranda Roth Knowles, one of the greatest ultimate players of all time, who's moved on to coaching and will be leading the US World Games team along with Maddie Sang next summer in Birmingham, Alabama. Not a bad uh, mentor to have in the science department or the ultimate department as you see Georgia's run through the Appalachian Conference, the Southern Appalachian Conference, and Southeast Regionals. One of these teams is going to get to 17-0, Ian, and look, there wasn't really a regular season this year, right? But going undefeated for a championship is a pretty special thing that doesn't happen very often in Ultimate. You're right, and, and think about what Joe just had to do at this college championship alone. The 11th seed, having to take down two higher seeds from its pool on route to doing so. Beating Cal Poly slow. Beating Colorado, a team that Many in the Ultimate Media ecosystem thought would be the real challenger testing Carolina in this game. But Georgia had other ideas. I mean, many in the Ultimate Media ecosystem. That's what you thought coming into the tournament. You thought it was going to be Colorado UNC in the final, right? Deep shot goes up, and it's not going to work for UNC. Yeah, I thought so. That's where the smart money was. Colorado had a run cut short as we see this deep shot. Used. Just missed execution. He had the receiver. The receiver had steps. Throw just not on the money. And there's, there's a pinch of hero ball going on right now for Dark Side, which is not their game, even though they've got a lot of heroes. A Georgia break would get the game back on serve. Drew Francesco running out of time. Resets for Miller, and a good one as Jungst drills him in the back. And Miller takes a timeout. And Jungst gonna get a talking to from the observer. I believe Carolina just got a blue card, a team misconduct foul. Well, I mentioned the University of Georgia working it downfield. Youch. Sam Hobbs shaking up a little bit. Hope he's all right. Georgia looking to retake the lead. We talk a lot about the North Carolina youth scene. How about the ATLians? 2019 YCC U20 co-champs lying on the ground there. On the left, you got Ben Dameron. On the right, you got Adam Miller. Aiden Downey on the top of the shoulders. Several other University of Georgia finalists in that photo as well. And that was a, a momentous occasion for them. Michael Fairley, TJ Martin coached that team. It was Chatwin Matt Bush Johannes who was coaching the North Carolina Triforce team in that tournament. So they were the best team. They, they, they probably would have won the finals if it hadn't waged, but unfortunately it got thunderstormed out. They would have played a team from Massachusetts led by the talented youngster Orion Cable. So out of the timeout, Adam Miller with a disc where he likes it, in his hands, and he turns it over. Beautiful anticipation from John McDonald. In the hands of Matt McKnight. Waiting for some pressure. Distributes to John Singleton. Excuse me, Josh Singleton. McKnight up the line to Long for the score. And a missed opportunity for Georgia right there, Ian. You heard the sidelines calling for it before Adam Miller called the timeout. And he notched his second timeout of the game, and this dark side handler defense just locked in. Before we talk about that turnover, let's take you back through the goal here. Force side offense, attacking the backhand side. That's where defense, I beg your pardon, the Georgia defense was trying to force the throws. And you can see the defender, Jack Krugler, kind of caught, not appropriately aware. He was guarding Elijah Long right near the front of the stack. And Elijah didn't have to do much to shake loose. Elijah Long, two goals, one assist. Matt McKnight, I mean, he's a college veteran, but this is his first chance playing college nationals because his freshman year and sophomore year were during the pandemic. Another player with big time YCC experience before his college days. That's most of them. You get a look side by side there, the dark side dump defense. Suffocating Georgia. Now it's offense back out on the field to respond. Austin Nabbs, he's the open man, Jack Stevenson. Pretty good anticipation by the help defender, Kevin Piglioni. That's his second block in the finals. He was trailing Cook so much that he said, okay, I'm just going to concede the under, and I'm going to hang out deep for a second just in case something goes up. Georgia should have taken the under. UNC with a chance to take it to half. After being down 4-2, it's a 5-2 run for dark side. Pignoni resets for Lee. Pignoni scuba to the back corner. Oh, it would have worked, but it was dropped by Eli Freed. 
Nathan Austin now just kind of getting his hand up there in the line of sight at the last second. And a hook goes up and a huge grab by Matt Cook. The fans are entertained right now. Cook a little mini push pass, gets the reset of the stall count. Georgia's offense is all kinds of discombobulated. Trying to race down there. Well, I really thought that scuba was going to take it to half Ian. But now Georgia a chance for the equalizer at the other end. Downey dishes. Austin Nab spikes. Georgia is even. Austin Nab. Total faith in Cook. The 6'5 receiver who's been wreaking havoc downfield all weekend long. And then Downey. I, I really can't blame the defense of Freed in that space. He's on the fourth side of Austin Nab. He's taken away the space to the cone. That skinny inside shot is so difficult to nullify. Maybe a slightly more aggressive mark can take it away, but. Well, it's a point for halftime. And several of Georgia's top O-liners are going to stay out there and play D, including Aiden Downey, who's really loved Ultimate since he was 12 years old. His family is family friends with a former Florida star, Bobby Lay. So about 10 years ago, Bobby gave a young Aiden Downey a Florida jersey. He was a fanboy. This past fall, they were O-line teammates on Atlanta Chain Lightning together. <laughs> Love that pull for Georgia. Singleton unleashing a monster perfect flick. Alex Davis catches in stride. And dark side will dance their way to the half. What a shot from Singleton. One of the reasons Singleton had such a great look at Davis' trajectory was because the bidding defender, I believe that was Bennett, left a wide open throwing lane. No flat mark to challenge it once he missed on that bid. It was all up to Singleton to put Davis out to space and maybe he's the fastest straight line player here at the tournament. He's going that thing as hard as he can. Yeah, maybe any tournament around this planet. Alex Davis is lightning. And North Carolina does take it to half. They'll receive to start the second half. So UNC is up a break, but Georgia with a pretty impressive first half performance as well. They made a statement with the way they play in the first 15 points. Georgia with eight turnovers in that first half. North Carolina with seven. And Darkside has the one goal lead. We're joined by former Callahan winner and current Darkside coach Matt Gush Johannes. Georgia's giving you a game. What are your main thoughts on that first half? Oh, it was a fun one. Um, you know, I think they came out with a lot of energy. They got more energy than most other teams we've played this weekend, so uh, that's been a little bit to adjust to. And I think everyone on the field is, you know, slightly overwhelmed early start of the game, slightly overwhelmed because it's finals and first nationals we've played in a long time, so yeah, second half should be interesting. Matt, we've seen a couple of your players throw hucks into double coverage, a few D line offense opportunities not fully converted. How do you get that group under control for the second half? Oh, well, to be honest, they're going to get themselves under control, right? Like, I barely need to tell them anything for them to make any adjustments, so I'm not super worried about that. But, uh, you know, we'll, we'll coach them up a little bit, we'll help them find a slightly better structure and uh, help them change the pace a little bit, but they're going to be fine, I'm not worried about that. Matt, you're five years playing for Dark Side, you played in this game three times, you won it twice. What is it about the finals of Nationals in this tournament that is so special to you? Man, I think it's just an awesome celebration of our entire season and, and the work that all of the players on the field have put in, you know, up to this moment. And, you know, it's cool to have fans in the stands cheering really loud and, and everyone's getting excited, and I think it just demonstrates, you know, the love and passion we all have for the sport and for the players on the field, you know, the love that they have for one another. Well, sir, I'll let you get to it and get with your team to strategize for the second half. Appreciate the time, Matt. Thanks, Matthew Johan has had a great career as a player. Now he's on the dark side coaching staff at the half in North Carolina, 87, North Carolina. A cool perspective from above of College Nationals drone live shot here at the Silver Lake Sports Complex. At halftime, is North Carolina 8 and Georgia 7. And what we thought, Georgia might be slightly overmatched. They certainly traded punches impressively in that first half. Yeah, and right off the bat, Georgia just getting into its comfortable offense, working around any red zone poaches from Carolina. The dark side offense looked pretty smooth in the early stages as well. Solid first half for Andrews Youngs in the scoring department. They also had a couple mistakes. And for Georgia, the long ball was working early, and that's what they love to do. The Hawks came early and often, and this group is so comfortable, leading each other to space, chasing those opportunities down. And as we said, great to see Jared Bennett back healthy in this game for Georgia after an ankle injury yesterday. Talked about Elijah Long in the open. He has certainly been impactful. Liam Searles Bowes is a guy who hasn't necessarily put his fingerprints on this game yet, Ian. It'll be interesting to see if Carolina can get him more involved in the second half. If he doesn't leave a spectacular mark on this game, there's certainly plenty of other contributors from Darkside who can step up into that void. We've seen Alex Davis stretching the field with his right. We've seen Searles Bowes initiating things there.
Alex Davis. 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 Alex Dav